Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and today I am bringing you my top 19 books of 2019. Now that is going through the end of November, so I will be including December in next year's wrap up just because I haven't finished reading for this month. Now the way that I'm going to go through these is um, I'm going to start with the end of the year and go backwards, mostly because that's how I have them listed in front of me, and so we're just going to go with that. Now, as far as the qualifications for what I put onto this list, the majority of them are five-star reviews, but I didn't have 19 five-star reviews, so instead I added in ones that I enjoyed reading. I have 19 books here, and then I have four honorable mentions, so I did manage to find enough books, and let's get started. I'm not going to leave really long descriptions of each book here, just because otherwise we're going to be here all day. All right, guys. Grab a snack, grab a drink, pop a squat, and let's get going. So the first book that I am going to talk about today is The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. This is the first book in the Hell's Library series. It came out this year, and it was I just had it in my most recent, uh, recent reads video. This book follows Claire, who is the head of the Library of the Unwritten in Hell, and so any book that is not completed or not finished by an author ends up in this library, hence why it is called The Library of the Unwritten. This follows Claire as one of her books comes alive and becomes a being, and she has to go up to our world in order to find and retrieve this book. The second book that I am going to talk about is Warrior in the Wild by Trisha Levenseller. This book takes place in the Viking era and follows Resmira, who is the daughter of the chief. When she goes for her coming of age ceremony, she is sabotaged. And due to this, she is sent out into the wild. Now, the wild is outside of any of the cities or any of the villages basically is an area where people are sent to die. And now she is given a task, and that task is to kill a god. And things ensue, and this is a wonderful book about friendship and family and finding yourself. And I absolutely loved it. It was such a great book, and I highly recommend. The next book I'm going to talk about has definitely been one of my favorites this year, and that is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. This is the first book in the Necromancer series. I don't remember what this one is called exactly. Sorry, I'll put it right here if I... This is a science fiction slash fantasy book that follows Gideon, who is a swordswoman from the planet of the ninth, I believe it's called. And she is the uh, swordswoman slash bodyguard to the most powerful necromancer there. And the ninth is all about the dead. Each planet has a different number, one through nine, and each of these has a different group of people there that specialize in different things. That was kind of an all-over description, but this is full of sass, sarcasm, sword fighting, and lesbian necromancers, and basically just made me so happy to read. I enjoyed this, and I cannot wait for the next one to come out. The next book I am going to talk about is a controversial one to a point. It's one that BookTube really is not a big fan of, unfortunately, and that is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chotsky. This is the first book in the Gilded Wolves series. So this follows a group of outcasts who basically are planning a heist and things go awry and they end up having to improvise as they go along. Basically, I recommend this book if you enjoy heist books, so I think it was really well done. Is there stereotypes in this? Yes, there are, but they also seem to fit the characters' personalities as well. So, I don't know. I enjoyed it immensely, but it's not for everybody. The next book I'm going to talk about is a reread, and that was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the first book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I have since read the second one, Hunting Prince Dracula. Didn't enjoy it as much. This book really was the most, like, adventurous of all of them, or of the ones that I have read 
so far and I enjoyed that the most. That is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the stabby stabness and the let's figure out who murdered these people things rather than the high romance and that's what this one is. So I do highly recommend this. This follows a girl named Audrey Rose who is studying to be a mortician in a world that does not allow women to become such things. Um, and basically she works for her uncle and they get sent the bodies of the women that are killed by Jack the Ripper. And so Audrey Rose, along with her friend Thomas, end up trying to discover who Jack the Ripper is and why he's killing these women. Next up on the list is another new release, and it's Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. This is such an adorable graphic novel with the cutest art style. It is a romance, um, but it is adorable. It's about two seniors in high school who are mourning the fact that it is their final year working at the pumpkin farm in their hometown and then that next year they will be going off to their separate colleges and they decide to take advantage of their last year working on the farm and they shenanigans basically ensue and it's so adorable I cannot recommend this enough it made me smile so many times and it really just was a cute and happy read. The next book I'm going to talk about was a bit of a surprise for me because I didn't realize I was going to enjoy it so much. And it is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is, I believe, the only Christina Lauren book I have ever read, mostly because romance really isn't a big thing for me. It's not a genre that I tend to go towards. It's more of a if the shoe fits kind of read for me. I'm very picky about my romances. But this book was so awesome and so great. It follows twins Olive and Amy. Amy has just gotten married to the love of her life and suddenly everyone at the wedding comes down with food poisoning. Now Amy is very big on any sort of deal she can get, any coupon, she's very thrifty. And so her honeymoon is non-refundable. So she convinces her sister Olive and their best man, Ethan, who is the brother of the groom, Olive and Ethan just despise each other. And they, it is, they are convinced to take this honeymoon together. And so they go down to, I believe it's Maui, and they spend a week on a honeymoon that's not theirs. And romance ensues, as you can assume, and then drama and it was just so well done. I will probably read it again just because it was adorable. It made me smile. And the romance, I felt the romance between Olive and Ethan ended up being quite healthy, which I was a li I'm was always very worried about when it comes to any sort of romance books because I'm a big, obviously, supporter of a healthy romance. And lots of them are not. But this one really is, and I really enjoyed how they took each other into consideration. So... Highly recommend again. And now for something completely different. The next book I'm going to talk about is The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This is the first book in the Burning series. And this is an African-inspired story that follows along similar lines of Game of Thrones. Basically, it's an adult fantasy. There are dragons, there are dragon speakers, there are kings, there are queens. It is a long story. It is a complicated one but I loved it. It is so much fun. The majority of this story follows a fighter named Tao who is not born with any sort of magical gift, but has this intense desire to fight for what he believes is right and finds himself as one of the top people in the royal army. And there is blood, guts, and gore, and is it's an intense story, but I do highly recommend it if you are into any sort of fantasy. And there are dragons in here, although they do take a slightly less major role, which is fine. But I do highly recommend this one as well. All right, moving on. The next book that I am going to talk about is Storm and Fury by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the first book in the Harbinger Saint series. If you haven't noticed, I have a thing for the first book in series here. This book follows Trinity, who is a girl who is being guarded by gargoyles. So she is being protected inside of this sanctuary sort of 
place by gargoyles who have raised her. And she is a very powerful halfling of sorts. She is half human, but the other half of her is incredibly powerful and is supposed to be a secret from the rest of the world. And when another group of gargoyles realizes what she is and she is betrayed by someone close to her, she is forced to rely on these strangers in order to keep her safe. Add to this the fact that she has a disability, which is that she is slowly going blind. I thought that this book had amazing representation and it really was a fun, albeit incredibly predictable book. I knew exactly what was going to happen. There was really only one aspect of this book that I didn't see coming, but at times that's really what you want and what you need and I had that for this book. It was definitely what I wanted and what I needed. And even though I predicted it, it was well written and I look forward to reading the continuation of the series. The next book that I'm going to talk about is The Fever King by Victoria Lee. This is the first book in the Fever Wake series. This book takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where magic is actually a disease and the majority of people are all killed whenever they are infected by magic. However, there is a very, very small population that does not die and in fact gains magical powers from being infected by magic. This book follows Gnome, who is a young man who is infected by magic and then survives. So he is taken to a government facility where they train everyone there in order to basically become government uh, soldiers. And he ends up falling in love with a boy named Dara, who is basically my little grumpy cinnamon roll and is such a sweetheart. And I cannot wait to see where this next adventure takes them. The next book I am going to talk about is a magical realism book, which is my favorite genre of all time. And that is Natalie Tan's Book of Luck and Fortune by Rochelle Lim. Now this follows Natalie, who is a 28-year-old woman, I believe, who is coming back from traveling abroad for many, many years because she has heard that her mother has died. And now she never had a good relationship with her mother. However, she has been left her grandmother's restaurant. And that restaurant comes with a recipe book that basically allows magical things to happen to people with the food if they are presented with it. And Natalie is trying to come to terms with her, both her mother and her grandmother's death, along with the fact that she now is unemployed and has to try and figure out what's going on in this town. This book really talks a lot about generational gaps and miscommunication between generations, such as mother and daughter, grandmother and mother, those kinds of relationships. There is a bit of romance in here. It is quite cutesy and a bit insta-lovey, but it was still a very fun read. Moving on to a series that I have read this year. Um, I'm actually going to not hold up the first book because somehow it has run away and I'm not sure it is. I think I gave it to my mother. So <laughs> I'm going to talk about Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. Yes, this is in an absent dream, the fourth book, but I only own the first and fourth books because the second and third ones I got from the library because I was impatient. This is another magical realism sort of series that you can think of being compared to something like Chronicles of Narnia or Alice in Wonderland that follows kids that have been sent to a, another realm, to a magical realm, and then have had to come back. This follows kids at a school where they are having a tough time adjusting back to the normal world. They're having a very difficult time readjusting. And so the first book is actually a murder mystery when one of the girls is killed at this school and our main character has to figure out who it was. And it is so well done and so interesting. And it's a they're all very short books. But a lot is said in a very short period of time. I love Shauna McGuire's writing. In fact, I have another book by her. She also goes by Mira Grant. Um, and she is one of my favorite authors of all time. The next book I am going to talk about is a nonfiction book. I did read close to 20, a little more than 20 nonfiction books this year, I believe. And my favorite out of those is probably... The Poisoner's Handbook 
Murder and the Birth of Forensic Medicine in Jazz Age New York. And this is by Deborah Blums. This is a book that takes place during Jazz Age New York and it talks about the evolution of poisons. This book talks about how the implementation of the suffragette movement, civil rights movement, along with the no alcohol movement, whatever that is called, I cannot think of words right now, but that movement in New York, how that affected how people poisoned each other, quite literally. I don't know what it is with me and being very morbid, but I am being very morbid, apparently. So, this is a pretty dense scientific thriller book, I guess you could call it. Um, it is a thriller. It is true. It's not fiction, but yeah, I highly recommend this one, and I have it on my shelf, so I might read it again. The next book that I am going to talk about is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is the first book in the Illuminae Chronicles, and this book was so interesting. It's written in emails and reports and chat conversations, so it's not written in the same format as a normal book, but this book is a basically an apocalypse story that is also sci-fi that follows Katie and Ezra as they end up having to deal with being shipped off of their home planet. Now this all takes place, Katie and Ezra have broken up, and then later that day basically the world ends. So it's pretty shitty timing in all honesty. I loved it, it was so intriguing, and I don't want to give much away, but it was very well done, and I will definitely be reading it again in the future. The next book I'm moving into is Kingdom of Needle and Bone by Mira Grant. Now Mira Grant, like I said before, is Shauna McGuire and is one of my favorite authors, so I will read just about anything by them. This is a shorter book by her, that is a medical thriller of sorts that basically a doctor discovers a sickness that basically starts a zombie apocalypse. She ends up creating an island where she can take all of the not sick people and put them there in a sort of preserve where they don't have any contact with the sick so they can all stay healthy. It is very medical and it is very scientifically worded so it was a bit dense at times. That was a great book and it was very intriguing. I hadn't read a book quite that medically dense in such a short period of time. So be prepared but it is so well done. The next book I'm going to talk about is one that I read for a readathon that I did this year and that is Rome by C.H. Armstrong. This book made me cry. This book follows Abby, who is a high schooler who has recently become homeless. Her and her family are living in their car and they're attempting to find a place for them to be and she is trying as a high schooler to keep this secret from the rest of her school. And so when her friends start asking, why can't we come over? And she goes, yeah, you just, you can't, don't worry about it. And so it's a very heartbreaking story and it addresses something homelessness which I have not read about much in a YA book that was remotely non-fantastical. This is a very this is a contemporary story and it talks about being homeless as a high schooler and what it does to her, what it does to her younger sister and what it does to her parents. So it is a very tough book but it is so very well done. The next book I'm going to talk about is a thriller, and that is No Exit by Taylor Adams. This is a thriller that follows Darby during winter, so this is an excellent book to read right now, or maybe not. But it follows Darby as she goes through a... as she is attempting to drive through a horrible blizzard and ends up having to get off of the freeway and take refuge at a rest stop. Now at this restaurant there are four strangers there and when Darby goes outside at one point she notices in the back of one of the vans there there is a child in a cage. So she has to figure out who has put this child in the cage and what is going on. This is a tough book and Darby is not a good person. Like she does try to figure out what happened to this girl but she's not like 
the typical hero. She has done a lot of wrong in her life. She's really not a likable main character or a likable narrator, but the story is so well done and I did not see the twists coming and highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. All right, the next one I'm going to talk about is one that I find very difficult to give a summary of because it is so long, and that is Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Now, if you have not heard of this before, this is the first book in the King Killer Chronicles. There is a second book out. I do have it up on my shelf, but I really wish it was this size and not mass market paperback because that writing is tiny. Even here, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a long, long book, but it is brilliant. Oh boy, how do you explain this one? This is a magical, fancy, fantastical story about a magic school, a young man who is attempting to make his way in the world, and music, and love, and life, and murder, and it's so intense, and I am, it is impossible for me to try and describe this book. I'm really sorry, guys, but if you love fantasy, just read it. It is huge, it is dense, it is so good. And the last book on my list of favorites for this year is The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. This is a book that came out early this year. It is a interesting story that takes place in a small town where all of a sudden a sleeping sickness has taken hold and people are falling asleep and not waking up. So they're they're literally falling asleep and then wake, not waking up later and it's been weeks, it's been months and this town is suddenly cut off from the rest of the world. The, the National Guard is brought in and it just, it's told from many different points of view as people attempt to live their lives while they're in quarantine due to the sickness that no one knows anything about. And I remember just being amazed reading this book and I will reread it again, I'm sure. But it was unique because it wasn't so much a post-apocalyptic story. It was more just these people are sick and no one knows why. No one knows why it's just this town either. It was intense and it was a bit, bit scary at points, but it was very well done. All right, now I'm going to quickly just go through a couple of my honorable mentions just because Books are awesome and you can never have too many. The first one I'm going to mention is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. I did just talk about this one in my, in my most recent reads video, so go check that one out. The next one I'm going to bring up is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This is a book that we read for our book of the month this year and I highly recommend it. It was well done and it was intriguing in a new kind of superhero type away. As far as mangas go this year, I read through all of Delicious in Dungeon, at least all of the ones that I have been able to get my hands hands on, which are volumes one through five, and this is a fun story about explorers diving into a dungeon in order to find one of their lost comrades who has been eaten by a dragon, but she might not be digested yet, so they should still be able to get her back. And the last one I'm going to mention is Naturally Tan by Tan France from Queer Eye. This is Tan's autobiography and it was so interesting to read about his life and his point of view of what has happened. So those are the books that I'm going to talk about today. This, this video wasn't nearly as long as I thought it was going to be. Um, I tried to keep everything very brief. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys enjoyed reading this year. What were your top books of the year? And now is a perfect time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up right now and feel free to hit that subscribe button. Uh, we post videos normally every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, but since it is Bookmas, we are posting every day. So we will be posting through the 24th and then once we hit that, we will not be posting for the holidays until the new year. So until then, guys, I guess that's all you, all I have for you. All of our links can be found in the description down below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Try that again. <clears throat>